My weekend piece is called Reputational Risk in a Cautionary Tale from South Africa. It is widely accepted that a company's reputation is perhaps its most valuable asset. Reputational risk is the possible loss of the organization's reputational capital. Imagine that the company has an account similar to a bank account that they are either filling up or they are depleting. Every time the company does something good, its reputational capital account goes up. Every time the company does something bad or is accused of doing something bad, the account goes down. Recent developments in South Africa, where President Jacob Zuma is hounded by 783 corruption charges and saved for now by the immunity conferred on him by his office, are a cautionary tale for any company that takes its reputation seriously. The world is flat, news spreads like wildfire, and what happens at the periphery creates real-time blowback at the center before you can say Bell Pottinger, KPMG, and McKinsey. The Bell has told for the PR firm Bell Pottinger, in Bell Pottinger's case, the reputational hit was terminal. Bell Pottinger ran a racially divisive campaign on behalf of the Gupta's holding company, whose code words were white monopoly capital. KPMG was an auditor and advisor to the Gupta's companies for 15 years until last year. KPMG chose to overlook a $3.3 million diversion of public funds for a family wedding and wrote a report into the so-called SARS spy unit. This report was self-evidently a paid-for hatchet job, and KPMG last week rescinded the findings and recommendations contained in the report, which saw the removal of several senior officials of the Revenue Service. It also cleared out at South African leadership, including the company's CEO. KPMG is seeing a significant hit in its South African business and has had to decapitate its entire South African leadership. McKinsey took a juicy contract with ESCOM, a state utility that involved working with a consultancy linked to the family. ESCOM paid McKinsey $73 million for nine months' work ending in July 2016. And at one point, the consultancy anticipated receiving a payment of up to $370 million over four years. One internal McKinsey document noted the risk of being criticized for exorbitant fees. That was from Africa Confidential. McKinsey have yet to take any action against any of its officers. There is an old adage in the markets that of greed versus fear. What has happened in South Africa has moved the dial from greed to fear. If KPMG and McKinsey were listed on the markets, both would have tanked big. What this scenario informs us is that clearly both global businesses have insufficient oversight over what have become far-flung operations. And the bottom line has blinded headquarters to what is going on on the ground. This is a startling situation. I sincerely apologize for what went wrong in KPMG South Africa. This is not who we are, said John Vaymeyer, the chairperson of KPMG International, in a statement on Tuesday evening. He is to be commended for getting ahead of the curve. By contrast, McKinsey, whose reputation has been built on the reputation of its intellectual capital, are still trying to find their moral compass.